Last week, we talked about building a live USB key to test Linux from a Windows computer. Well, today we're going to show you two different BIOS options that basically just shows you how easy it is to adjust your BIOS options. One of these is inside of a Dell laptop, and the other one is inside of my streaming computer. So effectively, we just need to do a couple quick, simple steps. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. So leave us a like and a comment down below. I mentioned two simple steps. The first thing is you just have to make sure you can find the ability to boot off of your USB drive. And the second is you may or may not need to disable secure boot. We're going to look at secure boot and both of these options. Well, one of them, it's sort of only there in a hidden state. We'll show you what that looks like, but the default is off anyway, so that's okay. The second is we're going to show you how to make sure you can boot off a USB drive either automatically or simply manually. Before we get into doing any of those, let's just go ahead and have a brief look at a few other things that uh, came up on last week's video. Of course, this is the video we did creating a bootable drive to test Linux. So here is that computer there. And uh, you can see here that um, we created a bootable drive utilizing Windows. So this computer over here, of course, uh, we pulled out the old Surface Pro 1 and uh, we use the Windows operating system here, and we showed you how you can uh, grab the, we use Rufus for this, we show you how you can verify your ISO image. Now the biggest comment I got repeatedly on this is everyone saying, Ventoy is much better, Ventoy is much better. I agree. I think Ventoy is an awesome way to go, and I did a couple different tutorials. The last one was a little over a year ago, and it is still a good, viable tutorial, so you can, of course, find this video here. I will leave a link to this down below so you can find it. And uh, Ventoy has just been made so much easier in the last couple of years where the first time I did a Ventoy tutorial back in 2020, it was really hard to work with. Now they have a simple utility. You just install that. They have a version for everything. And then you plug in the USB drive and you go. What Ventoy allows you to do is plug in the USB drive and it will basically just take your drive and just simply make it bootable. And then you simply download the ISOs and throw them onto this drive and as many ISOs can fit on the space on your USB drive, you will have a good functioning system allowing you to boot into any one of those Linux drives. That is in fact what I still use to this day on most of my builds. When you see me test out a distribution on real hardware, chances are I'm booting that off of my Ventoy. I don't generally create bootable USB drives as I have done in the Windows video. I did it that way just because if you only need to try it out one off time, that's the case. Ventoy is a good option. I will note, however, as of today, I was going to go over to Ventoy and we're getting some security issues on their website. Hopefully they're resolved. Nope, they're not resolved yet. Somebody did raise this question 15 hours ago. Effectively, the, what happened here is the SSL expired yesterday. So hopefully the Ventoy group uh, is getting underway with this. Um, but I would, I, I'm a little leery about the fact their SSL expired. <laughs> but uh, they should just be fine. Uh, hopefully it's just a little lapse. They go, whoops, we got to fix our SSL and that comes back online. Uh, just be aware if you go to the website, Site right now, uh, I would probably avoid working with the Ventoy website until this issue is fixed if you want to go the Ventoy route. But anyway, we're not here talking about Ventoy. We are going to go ahead and uh, jump on over into the Dell computer first, and then we're going to have a look at the MSI computer second, and then we'll come up for a final wrap up. So here we are on a Dell Inspirian 15 3000 series laptop. Now for this part here, we have to record this on a phone because the capture card is not pulling in the right screen resolution. It cuts off the whole left side of the screen. So apologies for the crudity of this uh, particular build, but uh, we will work with it all the same. Now, what I always do is rather than finding the key that gets you directly into BIOS, I always just enter the one-time boot man manager because it's more consistent. It's usually one of the function keys on the right side of the board. F9 for an HP, could be F10. Most Dells are F12. MSI boards are F11. And you can just look up what is the 
uh, what is the function key to access the one-time boot manager on each one of your uh, particular computers. So in this case, I hit F12, I land on this screen here. Now this will show you the list of all available booting options that we have. And if I were to plug in a USB drive like the one we created, you would see another option here for that USB drive. So in this case here, it's showing us a couple different options. You'll see some of them do appear to be um, repeated. A lot of that has to do with how is it programmed in and how is the master boot record of that particular drive uh, configured. In this case here, you'll see that there's two entries, the first one and the, the one that says cubes, both say they boot the same drive, but actually the first one doesn't work. Only the one that says cubes boots into cubes. Whereas the PNY chip there, um, Mint or probably the other ones might work because that's Linux Mint. It's not as hardened for the security as Cubes is. Where Cubes is looking for one specific exact file, Mint's a little bit less uh, less concerned about that. You also see that you have some LAN options down there allowing you to boot through a network option as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and enter into BIOS setup. This is going to get us into our BIOS. Now this is not a full tutorial on how BIOS works. And this is very specific to the hardware, the version of BIOS, and things like that. But in this case, or utility setup, setup utility, there's a number of different terms you might use for this. We're just going to use the basic term BIOS, as that's the one that is um, uh, more consistent throughout. So what we have here is just the the first one is just a summary screen. You can see this is a Ryzen 5 computer. Uh, 3450U processor, has Radon, uh, Vega, Mobile GFX, you can see the cache, um, and then you can see there's two internal hard drives, the PNY and the SanDisk, those are both internal, you can see one of these is the M2 and one of these is just a hard drive, in this case it's an SSD, uh, and then you can see other options here, there's 16 gigs of RAM in here. And uh, keyboard type, hey, non-backlit. What's interesting here, or what, what's relevant for us here, rather, is booting into the system. So we want to access our um, secure boot first. Now, that's either going to be under security or under boot, depending on your system. So you're going to look for it, one of these. In my case, it's under security. So I go down, hit that, and hit enter. And you'll see that my secure boot is already disabled. Uh, I generally... Uh, Secure boot does not give nearly as much security as people suggested it does. And so I'm not as concerned about this being turned on. It is a bigger issue if people might have more physical access to your machine. So in an office setting, probably want to keep that enabled. Uh, in this case here, I probably could enable it since the two operating systems I'm having, I believe, support secure boot. I know Linux Mint does. I'm probably sure Cubes does, which should allow me to boot into the system. But in case something goes goofy and it doesn't allow you to boot, this is actually also a fix for uh, if something goes wrong in Microsoft's like secure boot, whatever else, try disabling that. It might actually get in there. What I would do here if I want to enable is just come up here, hit enter, and enable it. The other thing we're going to do, I'm going to hit the escape key, but get back to the previous screen. Now, boot options. What we he have here in this particular uh, utility is it will show us the options. So the first one, the uh, first time it goes in and boots, when you push the, the power button, it looks in all these locations. The first spot it's going to look is this drive here, the first one here. And you'll see that these two here are effectively the same file. Um, EFI, Ubuntu, Grub X64, EFI, Ubuntu, Grub X64. Either one of these would boot the Linux Mint. The third one will boot Cubes. And so this is where it's going to be located on Cubes. Now, you'll notice that it just says EFI. The way I have this configured, it actually, Cubes is mostly invisible because it's on a different drive. I have to use the one-time boot menu to get into uh, booting with cubes. And so what we're going to do though is inside of here, you'll notice that there's nothing in this particular one here about USB drives, making this one a little bit less, um, shall we say, a little bit less um, uh, easy to work with in that respect. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to plug in the USB drive we created and we're going to show you what this looks like with a USB drive in here. 
Okay, so I've plugged it in, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to exit discard changes, and we're going to reboot the system. Now, what the main point is here, there's no option to say USB drives boot that. Uh, what we will actually find is on other BIOS systems, you will find one such thing. And I'm going to show you that on my MSI board. So let's go ahead and exit discarding changes. And then we're going to reboot. And then I'm going to show you what this looks like. So it says down here, exit discarding changes. Yes. Okay, so we are back in the one-time boot menu, and then now what you'll see that once we have plugged in the USB drive, you'll see USB 1 enters in here. So now I can come down here if I want to boot one time off of this USB drive, I can just go ahead and plug it on in right here. Uh, plug it in, hit this button, and it's going to boot from that. But now let's have a look to see if this has changed setup, and it might. So into BIOS here, if we go over and have a look at our boot system, You'll see that the, there's still the exact same options we have. We don't have a specific option to say boot off of the USB drive. So in this one here, if I wanted to, I could hit this option and I can add a boot option and I might be able to add that USB drive. This may or may not actually find those. So in this instance, with this particular laptop and BIOS, I would not be able to predictably say boot off of the USB drive if it's there. Whereas most of your more desktop operating systems have a BIOS that allows you to boot off of the USB drive if it's there. I generally just don't see this particular option inside of this uh, this system now what this system does give us though that's an advantage is the ability to create a custom boot option so I might be able to actually add it but my experience working with this it's a lot harder to find it's better if you just let the system show you what the options are and hit enter here and add the various boot options to these so I would not recommend trying to change this unless you really want to dig into the in-depth documentation how to boot it but as far as our uh, situation is concerned uh, what you might do is just say hey we're just going to go ahead and boot off of the you USB drive from the one-time boot menu once your secure boot here is disabled. But we're actually going to have a look at another one that is a desktop computer that allows us to say, hey, if there's a USB drive, boot from that first. We're going to go ahead and have a look at that one next. So here we're on the MSI B350 board. This one does have an older version of the firmware. I'm not sure if there is a newer version of the firmware. Everything is working perfectly fine for me, so I haven't bothered investigating that. To get to the one-time boot menu on this drive, it is F11, and then you can see I have a few different options there. So it sees the Ubuntu hard drive. This is a Linux Mint, and it will see the same drive uh, one of these is going to be EFI, one of these is probably not going to be, and then it sees the DVD drive. We're going to enter setup here, and in this setup here, this is a lot more of an advanced system. So first thing I'm going to mention is that at least in this version of the firmware, which is a little old, 2017, the there is no specific um, there is no specific place for secure boot. Uh, what you can do is if you're using Windows, you have to go into Windows OS configuration, enable it here, and this is where Secure Boot is. So I honestly have no idea if this will work with Linux with Secure Boot, but since I have uh, not actually bothered with using Secure Boot, I, ha I generally just don't, um, uh, I don't worry about it. So that's where it's going to be and most likely you're going to find uh, under advanced settings now i am actually seeing some documentation reading up on this board newer versions of firmware might have secure boot inside of your security so if you do have a newer version of the bios on an msi board check under security to see if you find a specific option for secure boot there 
Now, what I like about this board here is you can see this quick panel up at the top. This is drag and droppable. So this is what will enable you to boot off of drives. So you can see the U's up here are EFI. The ones without the U's are non-EFI. In other words, legacy booting versus UEFI booting. So what I have my boot order set to is first it looks at the hard drive and looks to see if it can find an EFI boot partition. If it can't, then it looks to see if on that same drive there's a legacy option. And then it's going to look to see if there's anything bootable in the CD drive, and then it's going to be looking for the USB. Now, in this particular computer, I have an IC dock, so I can turn off the main drive and just turn that off. So when the computer boots, there's no primary hard drive, there's nothing in the, US, uh, the DVD drive, so it will immediately boot. If I simply drag this guy over here, then if I plug in a USB drive on this computer, then it will boot off a USB drive that's bootable. If, however, there is no bootable USB drive, it skips that option and just goes right to look in the hard disk instead. And so this is actually a really good way that if you're testing out Linux or you've installed Linux on a hard drive, then you can plug in your drive, it will boot Linux, and then when you want to go back to Windows, simply unplug the drive and it will just boot off of the first hard disk. So if I were to go ahead and save this and plug in our USB drive, then it will boot right into our USB drive. If I don't have that plugged in there, it's going to work. Now, you might have a system that works like this that's not the easy drag and drop. In this case, we can actually manually move these around using our boot option here. So you can see it hasn't actually saved our change here, but UFE hard disk. Oh, no, it, it has actually. I'm sorry. UFE hard disk, then UFE, or US, UFE USB, then UFE hard disk, and then the hard disk without UFI, then a UEFI CD DVD, then the, the USB CD DVD, which is this one here, uh, which is basically either or. I believe that's either or. Uh, which will allow it to anything that's not the primary hard disk, search that first and then go back to the hard disk. So those are the options and I can grab these guys here and I can uh, move them around as well. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how this one works as well. Uh, let's see. Boot order. Because I'd move that one and I'm not sure how to move these guys up and down. Let's see. Uh, I guess hit enter and yeah, so you just kind of drag and drop things around. Um, so that's actually how you're going to do that. That's why I kind of just prefer to do this one up here. So let's do that. This is actually the one I just moved using that. So let's move that over. So we'll do UFI, uh, UFI hard drive, legacy hard drive, then the CD drive, then the USB drive. So I'll go ahead and keep mine like that. So that is how you can get into your system and hopefully gives you a little bit more confidence to at least get into the BIOS. And if you want, you can always just get into your BIOS and just be like, okay, I've looked around at the various options and then we can actually um, save the configuration or exit or we can just kind of exit the system. Uh, let me see. How can I actually... Oh, look at that. There's a search function up there. I'm curious how I can actually exit the system without saving any changes. I could just turn the system off, I guess. So do we want to save configuration and exit? If you hit no, then it goes back to here. Honestly, on this one, I have no idea exactly how I get out of here. without. There you go. Hit the escape button. That quits without saving. Quit without saving. Yes, I'm just going to go ahead and not save any of those changes. So there is the information on finding some BIOS. It's just going to take a little bit of research for your particular computer. It should be something similar to one of those. And just figure out which key it is. Like I said, uh, F9, F10, 11, F12. One of those keys is going to get you into that one-time boot menu. From there, you can either choose to boot directly off the USB or you can enter setup if you want to as well. So it is important that you know a little bit more about the internal functioning of your computer. So it might be good to just pop in there and just read the various items there and see if there's any thoughts and maybe do some internet searches if you don't understand something. So that is our message here for today. With that, uh, that'll allow you to test out Linux even without even 
wiping out your current Windows system if you're just interested in testing it out. So if you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe and leave us a like and a comment down below. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.